So in this next video, we're going to define the concept of a measurable function. Let me just have a drink. I should have done that before the video started, how unprofessional. Right, okay, so we're going to define the notion of a measurable function. Measurable function. Okay, and I really want to stress the analogy uh, with the concept of continuity between topological spaces. Um, so, in, firstly, we'll discuss the concept of continuity between topological spaces so that I can then draw the parallels uh, between um, that and the concept of measurability between measure spaces. Okay, um, so, uh, if you have two topological spaces, if we have two topological spaces, have two topological spaces, topological spaces, uh, so let's say um, x and u, and another one, imagine that it would be called x bar and u bar. Okay, uh, and we have some function which maps this one onto this one. Uh, so that's just a mapping that ascribes to every single point in here another point in there. Um, then f is said to be continuous, said to be continuous, if um, for all um, open sets, for all u bar is an element of u bar, of big u bar, so this is a small u bar, this is just an open set, so this is a collection of open sets, this is the set of all open sets in this topological space. You take an element in there, call it u bar, uh, for any u bar is an element of u bar, uh, then um, the inverse image of this open set u bar is an element of u. So the inverse image of open sets is open. So basically, this is the setup. I have these two topological spaces. Here is x and here is x bar. I have some function mapping between them. I have some open set here, u bar, which came out of this collection of um, collection of open sets, u bar over here. So it's, I should put something like that. No, not like that. Is an element of. What a mess. Right. Um, and then basically what I'm saying is you find me all points in here which are mapped onto this. This is a set here, which I'm going to call F inverse. Or, oh, well, not F inverse, sorry. No. The inverse doesn't necessarily exist. This isn't necessarily a bijection, so it's not necessarily invertible. So um, the pre-image is what I mean. Uh, so all points, I, in fact I'll rigorously define it, is defined to be all elements x, which are an elements of x. Such So little x is an element of big x, the first topological space, such that f of little x is an element of u bar. So the, all the points in here, such that when you take that image in the second topological space, it's an element of u bar. Okay, so that is a, uh, that is a set. Uh, basically, you're going to insist that this is an open set, so it's an element of your topology on your original topological space. That is the definition of continuity amongst topological spaces. It's an abstract definition, uh, but of course it's motivated from the actual, you know, um, being able to draw a function, a graph, without taking your pen off the paper. Um, it's not instantly apparent, at least not to me, uh, that that is the same as the other one, but you can sort of, you derive this from something that's slightly closer to your intuition and it all comes beautifully and um, this concept is obviously very very important in um, in um, in geometry and topology right okay um, so uh, and it's as uh, the concept of continuous function is central to mathematics um, but um, now we're going to we're going to produce a similar concept uh, that is less important probably than continuity, arguably less important, but is very, very much so analogous to this. So, measurable functions, measurable functions, and I'm rewriting this out again, measurable functions. So, let, um, let x sigma algebra mu, oh wait, actually do you need them, ah, no, this is beyond this, actually, you don't need mu. Right, so, I, I told you about measure spaces in the last video. Uh, if you don't have the measure, if you just have a set with a sigma algebra on it, instead of being called a measure space, it's called a measurable space. 
So it's close to a measured space, but it's not quite there. It doesn't have the measure. So instead, it's just called a measurable space. So let x with sigma algebra s and x bar with sigma algebra s bar. So it's completely analogous to topology. It's even closer than I thought it was. Uh, you just have a set with a set of subsets on it. Uh, let these two be measurable spaces. So uh, I, that the only condition you have basically is that this is a set and um, these are sigma algebras of subsets. So uh, that's the only condition you have, uh, similar to here where you have a set and a set of subsets. So it's exactly the same, except that the set of subsets is obeying slightly different axioms. Okay, um, so uh, and let f map x onto uh, um, x s onto x bar s bar. Um, so there we have a function, and basically, f is measurable if, for all little s bar, which is an element of big s bar, so for all sets in here, the pre-image of s bar is an element of s. Yes, it is an exact copy of the continuous definition, except instead of being topologies, we are talking about sigma algebras. That is what a measurable function is. Now, it is not instantly apparent at all why you would care, um, but these things are important, and they do have... These are going to pretend, turn out to be the functions that are very... That, that we can integrate, so they're going to be very, very important. Continuous functions are going to turn out all... Uh, well, no under special circumstances, in the case that you know, in the case that, um, in the case that you, in the case that the topology, say you have a topological space with a measure on it as well, with a, which is a measure space and a, a measurable space and a topological space. Um, so for instance, the real line has, um, let me just talk about this for a second. The real line has a topology on it. We also discussed this sigma algebra in the last video, the Borel sigma algebra. So if a function is measurable with regards to the Borel sigma algebra, what is that going to imply? That's going to imply that it's also continuous because u is a subset of here. So if all, uh, if the pre-images of these are all in, oh, oh no, actually, sorry, no, you need stricter conditions than that. Uh, forget what I was just saying. Um, well, you can't guarantee that it's not mapped onto a different Borel set. No, we'll need to develop that. It is, what I was saying is correct under certain more complicated circumstances. So forget that. Um, I will give more intuition about what it means to be a measurable, um, a measurable uh, function. So it's exactly the same picture. It, you have this S bar in here, which is an element of our sigma algebra here, and this is our space X bar. We had a function um, defined on this other uh, measurable space X, and basically, if you take the pre-image of this, which is all points which are mapped onto here, uh, then that has to be an element of our sigma algebra on here. That is the concept of a measurable function between two measurable spaces, and it's going to turn out to be very, very important. So, we now, what we are in a position to do is define the notion of something called a simple measurable function. Simple measurable function. Ah, in fact, before that, I want to define, I want to put it in specific context with the real numbers, real line. Uh, so, if you have an arbitrary measurable space, f which maps this x, which is an arbitrary measurable space, and it's going to map it onto the real line uh, with, let's say, this Borel sigma algebra here. That's the usual sigma algebra we use with regards to when we're looking at this as a um, as a um, as the um, codomain. If we're using it, if we're looking at the real numbers as the domain, we usually use a different a different um, sigma algebra, which is the Lebesgue, um, Lebesgue sigma algebra, rather than that one. But the Lebesgue intersecting sigma algebra is quite complicated how that comes about. We will discuss the concept of Lebesgue outer measure and the complete measure space later. It, the, the, for those who know what a complete measure space is and somehow don't know what the Lebesgue measure um, sigma algebra is, it's the completion of the Borel sigma algebra. Um, Okay, um, so if we had this, we had an arbitrary measurable space mapping onto here, then the condition for it to be measurable is that any any set which is a Borel um, set 
is mapped onto a element of the sigma algebra over here. Uh, so that's the concept of it in the real line. Uh, so we're now going to look at these in the concept of simple measurable functions. Measurable functions. And these are going to turn out to be very, very nice, and we're going to define a, for, um, define a sort of integration on simple measurable functions. And then we're really close. We've got to integration this quickly. How amazing. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to integrate simple measurable functions on an arbitrary measurable space. Well, we're going to need it to be more than a measurable space. We're going to need it to have its measure back in a moment. Uh, but the concept of a measurable function doesn't require it to have a measure yet. So it just requires it to be a measurable space. So, take this setup I've got above. Uh, F is mapping uh, X, uh, this S, onto uh, the real line uh, with the Borel sigma algebra. F is called a simple measurable function, measurable function, if, how can I say this, if, it is oh ooh. if it is a f it can be written as a finite sum as a um, finite linear combination I might put mm, I don't know whether that's the real right word well I'll show you what I mean linear combination finite linear combination of indicator functions so what is an indicator function is the first thing we need to discuss so an indicator function indicator functions then indicator functions so an indicator function uh, is something that's given this beautiful symbol chi chi a of chi of a which maps the set x onto what does it map it onto it maps it onto um, it maps it onto zero it, well, it maps it onto something much smaller it maps it onto zero uh, the set containing 0 or 1. And basically, um, if a x is a little x is a specific element of the set big X, then it will map it onto 0 if x is not an element of A, and it will map it onto 1 if x is an element of A. So basically, this is what we've got. We've got our set x, which has some sigma algebra on it, but that's not important for now. The concept of an indicator function is defined without the concept of measurable spaces. Um, you split it up, you have A and A complement, so you have a set, a subset A, uh, and that has a complement, of course, and basically you map all the elements in A onto 1, and all the elements in A complement onto 0. That is the indicator function, so it's given this beautiful symbol, chi, uh, which is a Greek letter, um, and um, that is it, basically. Um, so, um, we can ask, what's the condition for an indicator function to be measurable? What is the condition? Is the condition for an indicator function to be measurable? Function to be measurable. Measurable. In this sense, up here, so we can view the indicator function or of A as mapping X onto um, onto uh, the real line uh, with the Borel sigma algebra on it, uh, and it may be only mapping it onto zero one, but it is mapping it onto the real line, and we can ask uh, what's the condition for this to be a measurable function? Well, basically, um, any any set uh, any set you take. Is either going to be it? Let E be a subset of the real line. Uh, chi A inverse of E can only be two things. Well, no, it can be more than two things. It can either be the empty set, or it can be A, or it can be A complement, or it can be the whole space. So if E does not contain, if E. Um, if E doesn't contain 0 or 1, contain 0 or 1, 0 or 1, either of them, then it'll be the empty set, because the inverse image, are, if it doesn't contain 0, will have no elements in it. It'll be A if it contains 1, if 1 is an element, uh, but not 0, so 0 I'll put across there. It'll be A complement if it contains 0, but not 1, 
and if it contains both, it'll be 0 or 1. Uh, so, providing all of these all of these elements are in the sigma algebra, are elements of the sigma algebra, uh, then we have the assurance that, um, that in fact, the any set in the power set of R, any set in the power set of R, the inverse image of it is in the sigma algebra. So you don't, uh, it doesn't even matter that we don't know what the Borel sets are. Um, Okay, so um, to um, characterise that better, to show that actually you do need this all to be the case for it to be measurable, uh, we need a few more advanced um, advanced theories, which theorems, which we'll come up with, which we'll do later on. Okay, and that's going to be important when we want to make sure. But just note that if those are if those are all in the sigma algebra, then any set in the power set of R, the pre-image will be in the sigma algebra, and therefore it will most definitely meet the, uh, meet the criteria to be measurable, because the Borel set, whatever it is, is a subset of the power set of the real numbers, so any set in here will um, go into a sigma algebra. Okay, so the concept of a, of a simple measurable function is just um, S of x is equal to the sum ai sigma ai i is equal to 1. N. So it's basically just uh, it's just a it's just sig into uh, it's just indicator functions stacked on top of each other. So basically, you have your set here x. You divide it up into um, into pieces. Say for instance, a one, a two, a three, and there might be some bits that some portions of the set which have no are, are in none of the functions and are therefore in all of the complements, so a1 complement, a2 complement, uh, intersection a2 complement, intersection a3 complement, so it's in all of the complements. Um, and basically, you map each one of these onto a1, a2, a3, and this will go on to zero. So that's what a simple measurable function is. It's just taking subsets, deciding what you're going to map them onto, map them onto a, uh, onto a real number, or it could be an extended real number if you want, um, uh, and then leave some bit if you want, or you could partition the entire set, you could cover the whole set with your sets, and um, map them onto, um, map them onto um, numbers in their turn. And in the next video, we will develop techniques that we can use to show that this is met, to show, to determine the condition uh, for it to be measurable, um, 